autumn has truly settled in the garden. October brought more rain and cooler temperatures, very much enjoyed by dahlias and roses alike. It's time to harvest our first ever crop of apples and check on all the gorgeous fall containers we planted earlier. Hi everyone, welcome to an autumnal garden tour. I want to show you what the garden looks like at the beginning of autumn. We have lovely containers and the dahlias are blooming beautifully. So I hope you enjoy this tour. Let's go first to my favorite dahlia of this season. This is a dahlia called Happy Single Kiss. Isn't this so beautiful? Its colors actually keep changing. At the beginning of the season, it was more red and then it was slightly more pink. And now it's in those beautiful peach tones. I really love the dark foliage and also the fact that there are single blooms because the bees love it. Also, it's very floriferous. Just under it, I have a really short, small dahlia called Pretty Woman. Again, slightly darker foliage and really beautiful small pink blooms, a stunner. Always a little evergreen structure, but you know that already. And right there, I have another rose. Not many blooms on this one, but I see a bud there. So that is promising. The crown jewel of any garden at the end of September must be sedums. So they produce masses, literally masses of pink star-shaped flowers that the bees absolutely love. If you want to attract bees late in the season in your gardens, you need this plant. Really beautiful. You can divide it. This is part of the group of plants that you can divide in late fall to get always more plants. You can leave its seed heads when the flowers are going to dry for winter interest. Love it. It's drought tolerant. <laughs> I can sing its praises for 10 minutes. It's drought tolerant, so it's perfect for a sunny location. Look how many flowers like this is just so beautiful. Love the leaves as well. Over here, we have a grouping of three containers that I put together earlier on the channel. So I'll pop the video if you want to see how I planted those, how I arranged the plants and decide how to group everything together. This is one of my favorite containers that we did on the channel recently. I love the schemia and this beautiful grass together. And I think that wispy texture of the Erigeon is bringing everything together. Then we have this bold lamb's ear. Also just those two plants together, the lamb's ear and the hookah, beautiful contrast right there. And of course, the little violas. Isn't this fall in a bloom? And look at those at the back of the petals. They have a little blue undertone. And again, that ties everything together. So beautiful. This is a must grow plant for summer. And right now until the frost, it's going to be perfectly happy. Just under, we have a little heather. Again, perfect for fall. A hookah, great perennial. You can use it for containers and then plant it in the landscape and use it like that in the spring. It will keep its foliage throughout winter. Actually, this is container number four. Remember I told you we need something to complete the grouping of three. It ended up being this beautiful okra, repeat of the chrysanthemum and viola that are tying the whole grouping together. And then I left this beautiful campion. It's going to flower next year. The color was really similar. The color and leaf texture was really similar with the lamb's ear. So again, similar interest. Actually, I forgot to show you this. I love this beautiful metal urn. It was a gift from my mom and I popped a couple of violas there. So again, I think the contrast with the blue, it's beautiful. Love those plumes. Pink variegation, a repeat of the schemia. I popped in another begonia here. Those begonias are just beautiful at this time of year. We have a little ivy and a pepper plant that's producing peppers. Actually, there's a couple that might be ripe. Let's see. A couple of peppers that we can eat, actually. And it's pretty difficult to get peppers to ripen in the UK, so it's pretty happy. There's still a bunch ripening. Look at that. We can also harvest them green. This is definitely my favorite area of the garden, of course. We spend a lot of time here to eat, to enjoy the sofa. So I really wanted this area to be the fullest. That little apple tree is three years old. I've had it for three years. And it's the first year that we had some blossoms at the right time. And also this is our first apple crop. It's a variety called L star. So this is a dwarf fruit stock. This is why the tree is still really small. Unfortunately, it's also, it needs staking and it's 
really crum literally crumbling under the weight of all these apples. These apples should be ripe right now, so let's try to harvest them. I think there's an apple. Ripping, that... ripping. I think an apple fell. Uh -oh. Did you hear? Oh, look at that. Ah, oh no, it was rotten. Ah. Oh, it's definitely time to harvest. This is supposed to be the, their ripe color with a little bit of, of pink, but I, I don't think they're quite ripe yet. I don't know. I don't know if they're ripe or not. This one came off. Okay, I kind of like, I lifted it and then I twisted it and this little bit detached. Oh, look at that. Look how big it is. Our first apple. Okay, let's put it in the basket. I grabbed the basket. Oh, look at that. First apple. Okay, let's try again. Simba, you're not an apple. You're not an apple. Can you see this? Can you see this? Oh, it's an apple. It smells good, huh? Ooh. Oh, it smells good, huh? Ooh. Because what is in this basket? I think it's from your parents, no? They gave this to us, like, what? All right, can I do this one-handed? Okay. Aha, got it. Yeah, sun is coming. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Counting apples. <laughs> Counting nice. apples. So we got thirteen apples plus the one who rotted, unfortunately. Still have a couple that I left on the tree. I can show you because they were pretty small. Um, and also they didn't have a lot of red color yet. So I'm hoping we still have one, two, three, four, five. I'm hoping they can ripen a little bit. The weather is still pretty good. So there's a chance that they might ripen. Let's see. What recipe should we do with it? What's your favorite thing to bake with apple crumbles or maybe a jam? Let me know what you would do with these. Let me set this somewhere. Oh, so pretty. Do that. Very. Honestly, very happy. This is our first apple harvest. I'm just ah, over the moon. <laughs> yeah. You love your apples. Mine. <laughs> That's their way to say mine. These are for okay. <laughs> we have some snapdragons here grown from seed, still blooming. There was a bee on it the other day. So it's still a great nectar source late in the season. And bees have to really wiggle through and this is how they get nectar all over them. And you can see here, this is why it's called a snapdragon. Like the plant literally snaps back. Isn't this so fun? I also have two osteospermums, but they're done flowering right now for the season. Right next to it. Beautiful rose, the most floriferous rose that I have. The beautiful lady gardener. Well, the blooms are fading, are fading right now, but still a lot of buds on the plant. Really good. We added this earlier in the season, and actually, I also added a rose at the front called Claire Austin. I didn't give you an update because it really didn't grow well. There was not enough sun, so it definitely needs to be moved somewhere where it is going to get more sun and probably a better access to water. The plant is still alive. It's just we didn't get many blooms. But uh, perf this one is perfectly fine growing in its spot. Lovely, absolutely lovely. I love that view where we see the rose and then we can see the dahlias and then the other rose. I really love this area. Absolutely loving this dahlia. This is one-eyed Jill. Lovely, look at this. Gets, this is one plant and we're getting so many blooms. And this is definitely one that I would say is good for cutting. Can you see? It's producing the longest, really straight stems, strong and sturdy stems. It's perfect, perfect for cutting. It's beautiful. Um, just behind, of course, I have my little roll doll rose. So we're getting another flush of beautiful blooms. Really small blooms, but a beautiful apricot color. Absolutely stunning. And then over here, this was actually another uh, dahlia that was in the same pack labeled one eyed Jill, but this is clearly not. So if you can ID this one, let me know. I love the purple shade though. Another dahlia surprise. Geraniums, lovely, still hanging on. 
This Nicotiana also still hanging on. Again, I harvested some seeds, so that's a great annual for next year. Oh yeah, this is, um, this is catmint. This is a catmint I grew from seed. It took a while for it to, to get to that stage. I keep cutting it back when it goes to seed and they love it. It's meant, it's meant for cats. Oh, yeah. <gasps> yeah, you like it? This is the only plant you're allowed to eat, okay? <laughs> This is turning a little bit into a holding bay for the garden because we only get morning sun in that little strip so it's a great way to keep the plants in the shade. This actually worked really well for my beautiful salvia. It's on its second flush of blooms. It was blooming beautifully in May, then a little bit in June and right now in fall it's, it's happy again and this, this is the perfect color for the season. Hi baby! Hi baby! Hunting? And the little shelf. I actually want to add pumpkins there for fall. Right now, the main interest is that beautiful succulent planter that we did on the channel a couple of weeks ago. I love the color mix. It's doing really well outside, but it will have to be protected from frost. A couple of sedums, a beautiful string of pearls, a panda plant, absolutely lovely. I'll pop a link to the video if you want to see how this came together my favorite second project so far. What else can I show you? Oh, yeah, the, the little begonia table. This is just coming into it so now, towards the end of September. <gasps> Beautiful. We have a riot of blooms. We have so many different colors. A dark pink, a beautiful apricot tone and over here we have some white fluffy begonias it is it is beautiful it's actually several containers i planted those um, earlier in the spring and it's a great investment like dahlias if you want late color in your garden invest in begonias this is a west facing garden so part of the garden is always in the shade and this is where we are right now as opposed to the other side where I have my tulips and my dahlias because we get of course the sun during the day. So over here is mostly foliage plants so things like ostas, hookras that can tolerate a low light level. I also add some foxglove last year and I'm going to repeat that. I recently added though the crown jewel to me of flowers some white anemones. This is a beautiful Japanese anemone called Onorin Jobert. I couldn't decide last year whether I wanted pink or white. I ended up choosing pink and then I thought I need the white as well. So I got two plants, one here and one just next to it so that we have a bit of a filler here. Um, I replanted a couple of hellebores, one here, one there and we have some at the front. Also refreshed the hookah here because unfortunately after a couple of years even perennials fade out. And then of course the flower bed is peppered with ostas with different leaf shapes and patterns. It's really beautiful. I love this one with the white stripe, really beautiful. And this one with the bluey tinge. It's actually due for dividing. Some perennials need to be divided at the end of fall and ostas are one of them. So you can just dig out the plant and put a knife or a spade through it and you can just divide your plant that way. This one is big enough to do that now. We didn't have great luck with this new meadow this year. The weather was really dry over the summer, so a lot of those plants went to seed early. But the cosmos are joining the party. We already have a number of beautiful blooms and a lot more plants that are growing. So we might have color until late October, early November, if the frost arrived late. I already actually harvested some seeds from the meadow, some corn cockles, so we can always resow it next year but at least we do have a little bit of late color. Let's go see the front garden revamp. I love this eucalyptus tree. I planted it last year. It has grown quite a bit and this beautiful silvery foliage is perfect if you want to cut it for wreaths, for bouquet making. I actually have a wreath on my front door where I used a little bit um, of this beautiful foliage. I absolutely love it. I think it, it wants to get massive though, so we might have to move this pretty soon. Just behind it, I have an hydrangea who barely, who barely survived the, the dry weather. Don't despair if your hydrangea dries out, loses all its leaves because there is still hope. This happened to mine over the, over the summer, unfortunately. 
but with a little bit of watering, a little bit of love, I was able to recoup it and it's right now. We lost all the blooms, of course, but the plant is still alive and we can always get blooms next year. A couple of the sunflowers that I sowed are finally blooming. That's really lovely. Um, Say hi to Simba. <gasps> hi, Baba. <laughs> hi. And I also ended up adding a couple of ostas right here. Really love this beautiful variegated foliage. And of course, the main event. So unfortunately, one of the little camellia trees that I had as my main evergreen structure passed away. So I moved this around so that we would have one um, tall centerpiece. Moved back my two little curry plants, which is this beautiful, really wispy foliage that blooms um, with yellow blooms in spring. It's beautiful. And then I added some new echinaceas. We're towards the end of the season for them right now, but it's still a beautiful little accent there. And then this lamb's ear <laughs> got absolutely massive. Uh, if you remember, I planted some really small, I think nine centimeter cans, just a couple of plants. And actually this lamb's ear absolutely love that spot. I wasn't expecting it because the tag says, needs full sun and this only gets a little bit of morning sun but now we have a silver carpet of really soft foliage it's really beautiful sensory plant i need to do a little bit of dead adding but just behind i popped a little campanula on either side a little blue accent some violas hi Cinda, do you want to come to the tour <laughs> me, me. hi do you want to do the tour with us Oh, of course you do. Of course you do. Come on. Yeah, good boy. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> so yeah, I was saying actually just behind the lamps here that is becoming quite tall, I popped a couple of violas, chrysanthemums, some others, little trick actually that are still in their containers so that we can get a little bit more height from the plant. And, you know, just adding a little bit of full color there. I think that ended up really lovely. Do need to add that a bit though. I hope you can see this on camera. I had a couple of grasses at the back as my tallest layer. The cats absolutely loved ruffling in them. So they're a little bit squashed and not blooming really well. At the front, I still have my little trailing ivy that's surviving the lamb's ear. And then I added two i had a couple of shrubs here this one died because we have the roots from the neighbor's tree basically that pumps all the water out so i think it, it dried out uh, so i popped away those two little shrubs and replaced them with some erigeron i really love the wispy texture it's it's blooming out now we're getting pretty late in the season um, but again one that will come back next year beautifully and actually we also have our first autumn container right there let's have a look You've seen this already. This is my first autumn planter. I really love how it turned out. We have a beautiful rudbeckia as a centerpiece, beautiful accent grass, a little hookra. Begonias are coming into their own, so they are in every fall container I've created this year. Tucked in also a little chrysanthemum. I just really love the mix of colors there, and it's a beautiful way to welcome us into our home. <laughs> Simba. <laughs> Reminder to self, Keep watering your plants after you planted them. I kind of forgot about those beautiful anemones and they're a little bit droopy now. So we need to do emergency watering today, hopefully to get them enough water so that they survive. Don't forget to water your plants. I forgot to show you, I have another little container here with a heather, a bit of lamb's ear, a chrysanthemum and a viola. Really love that combo also for a fall planter. Some of the dahlias survived the heat wave and the spider mite attack and I ended up finding this bug control that is prescribed for spider mites. So I'm hoping it works. It's the first time I'm going to be using it. It says it's bee friendly. So I'll give that a try and see what it does.
This is one of them. I think it's a variety called Red Pygmy, but those were surprise dahlias. Those were not the ones that I thought I was buying or how they were labeled in the packaging, but we have a beautiful flower and a lots of buds. So lots more color to look forward to there. Another one here, I think we can see the beginning of a flower. Beautiful fiery tones. Whilst the dahlias in the containers did pretty well, those here have suffered from spider mites. So I ended up cutting them all to the ground, but most of them flushed back again with beautiful foliage. At least the tubers are continuing to grow and we might see some blooms. I had also cut back this guy and over here. Actually, this is a really good example. You can see the main stalk kind of completely died, but a lot of offsets, offset shoots started appearing. The meadow is full of nasturtium seedlings. Cosmo right there. The only color we have left mostly in the meadow is this beautiful verbena. Last week I sold some RD annuals. And this is my autumn sowing of sweet peas. I have three varieties. No one sprouting yet, but we'll see what happens. Then over here I have some calendula, some stir flowers, and some scambiosa. Actually, I can see the first one to germinate were those calendulas. But I can see here also we have, can you see? That little green, a bit of straw flowers, and then some scapulas as well. Over here, I have two types of nigella, a mix, and also a variety called Miss Jelkil, some gypsophilia. Over here, nothing, nothing sprouting just yet. I have some snapdragons, some clarkia, and some larkspur. Over here, I have, I didn't finish this flat, I have some nemesia and some honesty. The Nemesia stars is sprouting. I do use covers to help with moisture retention. And I actually really love those new labels that I got from Amazon because they fit just under the, the domes. So that's really, really handy. I hope you enjoyed this garden tour and seeing the progress in the garden, everything that's blooming and also harvesting the apples. I'm really pleased with our first apple harvest. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe if you haven't done so already so you don't miss any progress updates and I'll see you next time. Bye. I do you want to bet that he sits in this basket within the next two minutes? Are we sitting in the basket?